Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Um I know it may seem like I don't never do my hair. But um I be working out and I think it's kinda silly to get a relaxer right now, but anyway. Oh, excuse my cigarette too, because I gotta smoke. But anyway. So tonight we are ready to discuss um Love and Hip Hop. Atlanta season three, episode three. Now, I did not do a recap on episode two simply because I don't know. I don't really think it was that necessary, or either I didn't feel like it. I don't really know. But anyway, um, and the very first recap I did, uh, I didn't write anything down. I just watched the episode because I was so ready for it, and I forgot like a whole lot of things. It was a whole bunch of things that I forgot, but. Oh, well, boom, it is what it is. So I, I made a list tonight of the things that I need to discuss. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first episode opened up with, I mean, this ain't the first episode, the third episode, but anyway. It opened up with Mimi and Nico riding around town. Nico was trying to tell her that um, he seen Stevie J or whatever. So she got mad as usual. She always get mad about the stupid stuff. When she she don't ever get mad about the things that she should get mad about. But anyway, this fool got mad, told him to get out the car. And if he wasn't gonna get out, she was gonna get out. So he says, Well, I'm not getting out the car. Hold on, I got something going on with my computer. Okay. Anyway, he says, well, I'm not getting out the car. She was like, well, if you're not going to get out, then I'm going to get out. He was like, well, that's fine. You can get out of your new car. Like, really, people? Come on now. She wanted him to get out. He wouldn't get out, so she decided to get out of her car. Like, who does that? No, I would have called the police on his ass. Like, if you, you got two choices. Either you're going to get out freely. Oh, we were going, someone's going to put you out. But anyway, she got our proceed to walk down the street with her little six-inch heels on. But anyway, carrying on. Okay, so then it goes on to Scrappy. He said he needs some advice, so he wants to go talk to, I believe her name is Erica Pinky. I can't remember. He said he wants some advice. Okay, but we all know that ain't really what he wanted if he went to Erica because he's already expressed his feelings towards her, which um, she basically was coming off at him. And I respect the fact that he told her the truth, like, he got a girlfriend and he don't want to do nothing to mess that up. And, yeah, he would be with her, but um, he feel like if they go about it the wrong way, then it don't do nothing but come back to haunt him. And he don't want that. So I salute, his, salute him for that. But anyway... Alright, so then it goes on to um, um, Stevie J and Jocelyn. They in this big old house, and um, Stevie J is saying that, you know, he's going to cook dinner for Benzino and his girlfriend. And, no, right before that, he tells Jocelyn about the sex tape, this whole sex scam thing. Jocelyn hauls out. She's still serving folks. Because first she was Molly the Maid. And now she's somebody. Who did she say? Madam the Porn Star. <laughs> like, I wish I could just spend a day with Jocelyn. Because, like, I just love her to death. Really. But, okay. So, it moves on to, okay, so, um, Young Jock and Carly Red go on, a, like, a double date with... Erica and O'Shea. Now, O'Shea is really cute. Like, he's really cute. So, they talking. They having fun. They bowling. this in the third. And so, at the end of the night, Young Jock like, yo, well, we got the tab. You know what I'm saying? We ready to pay for it. Okay. So, O'Shea says, no. Nah, no. Nah, you know, we got it. I got it. Jock was like, yo, you sure? O'Shea said, yeah, I'm sure. I got it. They leave. Jock and Carlin leave the bowling alley. Why in the hell does O'Shea ask Erica for her card? 
<laughs> now he told Jock he had it, he was gonna pay for it. But now he asking Erica for her card, like really? Like I, I don't know. I just don't get it. Like I feel like I wouldn't allow them to put that on the camera. They'd have had to take that away or something because no. 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 They just I don't know. It was too much going on with that. But so then it goes to um Rashida and Kirk. Rashida was at the gym. She come home. Kirk mad because she said she was going to be at the gym for only an hour and a half. And it's been three hours. Wow. Really, dude? <laughs> That's the best thing you could come up with. Like, she was supposed to only be gone for an hour and a half and she just getting back. You feeling some type of way? No. Kirk is always in his feelings. Get out your feelings. How old are you? Like, really. Let's be real. How old are you, Kirk? You need to get over yourself. But anyway, so Rashida says she ready to get back to work. Once again, as always, Kirk starts talking about what he got to do and what he got going on and this, then the third, and piss Rashida off. And then she talking about where she might need to get a maid, I mean a nanny. And Kirk talking about it's got to be a young nanny, somebody that he can FaceTime. Like, really? No, Kirk, Rashida need to put Kirk's ass out. It's simple as that. Because I get I get the whole co parenting thing, but there's a whole lot of people that co parent outside of the same home. Like you don't have to live in the same home to co parent. You don't have to do that. Put his ass out. He needs to go. It's, it's very simple. Kirk is I don't know, every time I think about Kirk, all I can think about is when uh Rashida's mama rolled over the top of his bike. <laughs> And everybody call fire. I I just can't I can't deal with Kurt. Carry on. Okay, my um my girlfriend she has to watch basketball. So every commercial I had to flip back to the stupid basketball game. Dumb shit I've ever seen in my life. But anyway. So I kinda missed when we came back and um um, Scrappy and Kirk was at the bar. They was talking about Bambi, but I called it, when I ca turned it back. They were saying that Bambi is pregnant, so she's gonna be having a little Scrappy or whatever. All I can say is I believe this is what she wanted. She acted like she was so distraught when she was buying the pregnancy test. Like, oh my God, his mama don't like me already. Uh, I told him I love him and he ain't said back, so this only com gonna confuse the matter. But that's what she wanted. I mean, come on now, let's be real. She done hopped from 50 VH1 shows, one show to the next, basically for the money. That's the only thing we can all come up with is for the money. Man, she got pregnant. She probably the happiest person in Atlanta when she found that out. She was. She was. So, um, let me look here. All right, so then uh, Carly Red and um Jock is at a restaurant. Jock, you know, is being nice to the waitress, which I probably would have said something too, like really do. But I wouldn't have carried the way she carried it. Like she just, she need to get on her, she need to get over herself, cause she really gets on my nerves. And I believe that Jock, he, I mean. And you don't have to deal with that. No. I mean, I understand the insecurities, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Carry on. Okay, so then Mimi is talking to somebody. She was talking to somebody. Stevie J. She was talking to Stevie J. Stevie J was trying to meet up with her to see where her head was at, like he said. But, um... She talking about she she ain't she jealous she jealous as hell like she don't want to admit it but she is jealous as hell of Stevie J and Jocelyn like she's mad she's jealous she's stupid all of the above but anyway she goes on to say that the whole purpose of the meeting was she moved without telling Stevie J where they had moved to she's sitting up here gonna say. Well, I'm tired of my daughter. Every time she come home, she talk about her daddy's castle. So, yes, I moved. L really? Are you that insecure with yourself? Are you that stupid? Are you that jealous that you had to go find a bigger house just to 
be able to say, oh, well, daddy got a big house, so do I. How old are you? That's high school stuff. No, honey, grow up. Carrying on to this good old dinner. So, um, Benzino brings his girlfriend over to the White House, the castle, whatever you want to call Steve J. and Jocelyn's house. Which I can't wait to next week because it's not their house. But anyway, I'm not going to go all into that. Um, so, they over there for dinner and, um, I mean, I understand Benzino needs love. Everybody needs love. It's very simple. But, I mean, I, I believe only, who, who, what grown adult that has any type of, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, I don't know, I can't think of the word. But anyway, he met his girlfriend on Instagram. He started DMing her. And that's how they got together. Really, Benzino, that was the best you could do. Like, you can't find no female, no other type of way besides Instagram DM. Can you make you a blackpeoplemeet.com or something? No. You too old for Instagram dating. No. Anyway, they decide that they're going to open up this new bistro thing. It's going to be called Sleazy and Zeno's Bistro and Bar. And then, so, Benzino stands up from the table and makes this comment, like, yes, it's going to be our bistro, it's going to be the hottest place in town, we're going to be the hottest niggas, and we're going to have the baddest bitches on, my, on our arms. N excuse me? You're going to have the what? No, honey, I'm not nobody's bitch. That's what um the girls should have said. They didn't high-five each other and everything, like, yeah, we the baddest bitches. When are we going to stop as black women? When are we going to stop referring to ourselves as bitches? Like, I understand me and my homegirl, my girl, <laughs> Nazee, she ready to get smacked. I hope y'all didn't hear that statement, but anyway, me and my homegirls, yeah, we may say, what you doing, bitch, or hey, bitch, or something like that, but we don't walk around and just, I, I wouldn't dare let my girlfriend say, oh, well, I'm going to the club, and I'm going to have the baddest bitch up in there. No, bitch, you're not. You may have the sexiest woman. When my hair is done. But you not you don't have the sexist bitch? No. No. Stupid. Grow up. Find a new term for your girlfriend, please. Okay, and so it moves on to the very end, I guess. I didn't I don't have any more notes after this, but um Kurt, he got his results back and of course baby Carter is his. Duh Kurt. Like really? He he just really gets under my skin like I hate Kirk. I do. I hate him. He gets on my nerves. I think Rashida is so pretty. With or without makeup, she's just pretty to be her age. She's really pretty. I mean, I'm not saying like she's just old as dirt, but she's really pretty and I think she deserves something so much better than Kirk. He acts like he's six. She got too many children in the house. Put his ass out. I, can, I just can't stress that enough. But anyway, like I said, these are all the notes that I have for today's episode. If I have missed anything, just add it in the comment box below. And I thank you for visiting Bernie Vision Television. And um, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all. Well, I'll probably see y'all before next week. But the main people that are going to be looking at this video, I will see you all again next week when we find out that... Steve J's house is not his house. Neither is his car. Who knows? But anyway, thanks for visiting. Bye.